All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, we're ready for our tri board meeting. We're still getting a little organized, so if we s seem a little uh, disorganized. disorganized right now, we are. Uh, so give us a couple minutes. Wait for the camera high, everybody. I had to do, uh, I had to do water today. Oh, what happened? Did you drink too much this weekend? Uh, I finished my tea up. Oh, your tea's done? Yeah, I didn't have any extra tea at the house. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm surprised, huh? I think about it a whole lot. Could have made you a chai. Maybe some. All right. So I think we're all here. Well, Miss Dunleavy made it from Boston. Very good. How do you know? Oh, you didn't know. <laughs> okay, so we'll. Start the tri board meeting. Um, my agenda is right here. So, actually, do we want to start the FY16 budget discussion first on the tri board? That's probably a good idea. I think that's a good idea. We, there were two reserve fund transfers on, but we have posted separately for after this meeting, so the finance committee is uh, fine. Going through as long as we have, we, the got the sign <coughs> we have the paperwork, the two transfers. Okay, so why don't we just go ahead and start the budget? So, just for everybody at home, the, the subcommittee of the, of the tri board, because met and we kind of were working through the budget, and we've kind of come up with some options. Um, our starting point was the, uh, was the reporting of revenues and projected revenues and uh, recommended um, operating expenses as per the town administrator's budget that was published in January. So following our recap of what we did at that meeting, there's a sheet of um, the revenues that we have been receiving and two sheets of the budget. So um, we used a little bit different formulas when we were meeting on Monday morning, but I know that GoPro met with David this morning, and um, I was, we actually, since the net was so close, I just really reworked it around what you two had come out this morning. So we have reven revenues based on the January 2015 projections of 15,481,995. Mm. That includes meals tax income of $300,000 that we're using as revenues there. It includes the revenue section of state income, which is just over $2 million, and it includes not the water sewer receipts, but the water sewer reimbursement to the town for the town's overhead share of those expenses. So not included in that revenues, we didn't use any, uh, no transfers of free cash or, um, or any stabilization funds or any other funds. This is really just the receipt list. Um, we have talked in the past, but did not include uh, as available for our starting point, the flushing of the pots of gold that we have talked about, you know, closing out old articles and, and other items that would bring us additional funds to use in some way. And it doesn't include um, any, uh, any e increases that we might be aware of since January. We're starting with that because we want a starting point in January, and then we'll talk about those increases at a second a little bit later. Um, and it does also does not include water sewer receipts because we're not including the water sewer expenses. So that's out of this budget. We're really talking about what's what we are you what is available to the town to use for funding the town and school budgets. So that's the revenue side. Now for the operating expenses, the budget a budget figure we're using now is fifteen thousand six ninety four seven oh two. Fifteen million. million. Yeah. <laughs> 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 did, did I use million for the revenues too? <laughs> Drastic cuts this year. <laughs> yes, fifteen million six hundred ninety-four thousand seven hundred two. Again, this Sorry, is six ninety-four or six forty-nine. Well, I've got six ninety. Oh no, I'll six ninety-four. 
$650,000. Yes, and I, I will oh, okay. explain. Yeah, there is an explanation. It's a $50,000 explanation. Does he have the average? The new oh, um, here. Actually, oh, and, and, and one. one. Okay. All right, so that budget includes the state's assessments and offsets of uh, just over $1.5 million. That's the negative side of the, um, the cherry sheets. Um, and the reason this is so different than what we discussed on Monday morning is we actually netted out the state aid for our purposes. So now we've put it back to the usual way. So this larger figure includes state assessments and offsets. Um, and it's based on a what we believe to be a level services budget to the town and school of over $14 million. Now I want to be clear, we did not make budget decisions. This is a bottom line. We're saying if we use that bottom line of what the total budget was recommended by the town administrator, where do we stand? So that's why I wanted to put in here, we wanted to say this is a bottom line budget only, subject to change, and um, because Select board has not voted, and the finance committee has not voted. And uh, with recommended allocations, the departments have not yet been determined by either the select board at finance committee, but we needed a starting point. So it just seemed a good place was starting back in January what was being recommended at that time. It doesn't include anything that a department might have brought in during this season. Again, starting point um, to know where we stand. Okay, so not included in that operating budget. Can I do that? Yeah, it's not um, the enterprise funds, water sewers, not in there. The um, there are no cola increases in here. There are um, we took the OPEP payments out. Mm -hmm. well, I think the schools did, did submitted with cola. I don't think we've taken those. Out. Okay, I think it's the yeah, town side. That, that's cola. part of yeah. So, okay. well, actually, and actually, the town colas are in this number too. I didn't think no. so. The, your budget that you submitted. Weren't they all down January, at the bottom? They were at the bottom. Yeah, you, asked, sheet. you asked. I this. added 50. I put a You mentioned that as a $50,000 figure, and I entered that as a. Oh, does uh, it? If you put the 50000 well, Let's see. All right, let me look at. Um, all right, so it may or may. Oh, it includes step increases, but I didn't think it included. Oh, it's the steps, no Yeah, calls. it includes step yes. increases. I keep getting those mixed up. Yeah, all okay. right. I don't get steps very That's often, so right. it's like. So for the for the town side, we did step only and didn't do COLA. And we, we will talk with the school about whether we will take that same line. They're, they're dealing with different issues. But at this point, um, it may or not. So that's where it's. We, we, um, the OPED payment has been taken out. OPED is something that we, again, as we have the last two years, we can pay that uh, in the fall. Now, so we're putting that off. And we also, the same with the t meals tax, which we did last year, mm -hmm. we're pulling out the 300, that we're not pulling out for these purposes, the $300,000, so that's available for the budgets. But you, those two together, that's over a half million dollars that we're looking at that will hopefully come out of other sources for the fall. So you, you, those are the parameters we established, which, which, off, which revenues can we use and what are the operating expenses we need to do for the spring budget. We had a shortfall of two hundred twelve thousand seven oh seven. Um, and and I know that what we had talked about before is our idea that well our finance can be a position that with this these are the amount of cuts that we need to make. All right. Um, what we're really looking at now is well let's look at this free cash. Let's really let's start looking at our free cash differently that we've got a portion of the free cash which is allocable to um, revenues. Revenues being revenues that came in higher than we expected than had projected and also expenses um, or, or underspent expenses. So if you budgeted a certain amount for towns they didn't spend it all, it came rolling back in. So that's really part of the budget side still. So we would be willing to look at that portion of the fiscal 14 free cash, which is free cash we already have certified, and also, we're trying to look at the fiscal 15 revenues, which are going to, which we think are coming in quite a bit higher than what had been estimated. Linda, I'm sorry. Do you recall how much of the prior year's certified free cash is um, from the budget? 200. Sorry, I was thinking it was a couple of hundred thousand. Six. Yeah, so four sixty-nine. So we we spent uh, one thirty-three at the annual town meeting, and then additional sixty-one. Uh, at the uh, 
small town meeting from free cash in order to balance the budget, and I think most of that went towards OPEP. Leaving a total balance of... <coughs> right now we have $292,000 of free cash. Free cash total. total. So are you talking about using the total unexpended free cash or just a portion of the well, 292000 We haven't made that yeah, determination. That's for us to talk about. Okay. Yeah, we that, haven't made we, what we want. Because it sounds what like we're, we're talking about... What we're trying to do, we didn't balance the budget. We're, we're, we're coming up with what is our shortfall. Yep. yep. And what are some ideas for balancing it, mm -hmm. and certainly for this select board to consider as you balance the budget and then for us to consider as well. Okay. That, mo that money, um, a portion of that could be. We don't have an exact uh, portion, but that's what we want to look at. And the way we want to see the free cash, a portion of that 290 something thousand is related, as I said, to the unanticipated revenue and underspent spent expenses. A portion of it is probably from one-time settlement funds, other one-time sources, and those are the kinds of funds we don't want to put into the budget because it will jeopardize our future funding on future budgets, but that is appropriate to use on capital. We could be using that for uh, moving into the capital expenses uh, in the fall and for the OPEB, funding the OPEB in the fall. So um, rat, this, this, is, this is the area you want to look at. So wrapping up our position on this, we were looking for a less conservative approach to be used in estimating revenues. Um, by looking at the year-to-date revenues that we had at the two-thirds point, when I went through it, there seemed to be at least a couple hundred thousand dollars of um, that we would have at the end of the year, kind of roughly based on those estimates that we would want to recapture. We're certainly not going to cut $200,000 out of town budgets when we had $200,000 in additional revenues come in. So we are looking to identify what is a, what the increase in revenues were this year that we could then recapture into the budget. Um, so if it's true of 15, and we know it was true of fiscal 14, we know it was true of fiscal 13, we have had consistently three to $500,000 more come in with free cash by reason of revenues that have been projected. I understand there's limitations on what we're able to project ahead, but once it's in, we know it's there. Mm -hmm. you know, we know we know what came in in revenues, and we can begin, and if we can ourselves make an estimate that that's going to come in in the future, that's something definitely that we need to consider as we're, we're looking into our future budgets. So I was just going to ask that. Did you um, discuss the, the DLS rules on that when you contemplated this or? Uh, yes. Or is that? Yes. We did. We did, a, we did and we cursed mightily. We, <coughs> we, 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 did we discussed it and we cursed the rules mightily. Yeah. And, and I think that we decided we were smarter than that, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they have limitations of what we can project into the future year, but we also know what we've captured this year. Right? Oh, completely understood. So, I'm so just, that we can just utilize saying, that. Because I just went to the budgeting seminar at the um, Hampshire yeah. Franklin Municipal Conference, and they were all over that issue. And of uh, overestimating revenues? Well, and again, uh, overestimating sounds very bad, bad thing to do, but what we're talking about is using historical revenue figures and anticipated revenues. Yes. But even in that context, they're still saying you really shouldn't use more than X percentage because you want to build the free cash. Right. And I just know it's going to come up. So I'm just mm -hmm. throwing it out that I think that's something we'll want yeah. to really think long and hard about. It is, and we are talking about defying yeah. you know, what we're, the limits that we have to live within. But if there are any of those, these are presumptions, but you're allowed to appeal that. Mm -hmm. or rebut that presumption or mm -hmm. prove, as you say, over our last three years, we've come in so much higher than that. We think that you know, we're really given too low um, an, an, ability, an ability to project too low uh, an amount. Uh, I think that our experience in the last few years that we have been hurt more by under projecting, or I'll call it under, just for lack of a better, uh, maybe they'll call it appropriate, by, by projecting revenues less than came in. We've been hurt by the, the, the by having to limit the budgets to that amount. Correct. And I, and I think you know, you, one of the measurements that you had put before the select board years ago was the idea of, you know, 
elastic revenues, what revenues are truly going up, down, and sideways on a regular basis. And if you look at ours and look at historically how they've moved, yep. you know, I mean, I think we could make an argument, but I think it's also something we may want to, and we're, and we're not yeah. there yet. Yeah, I know you're just throwing right. this out, but it may beg right. a conversation with Terry Williams or somebody before we actually. Yeah. We think <laughs> we can make a good case for it. We, we don't want to just say, oh, that's what we're short. Let's call that additional revenues and be done with it. You know, we're really not talking about that. We're really talking about, um, for our purposes, that it's come in some substantially less than we know that's there. And so we find ourselves in a position um, in this time of year, February, March, telling the town, we don't have enough revenues to cover your budgets, and we're going to have to cut, we're going to have to cut. And then, lo and behold, come July 1, we have a much higher amount of certified free cash come in, and we don't have to cut after all. It just feels like an exercise that we don't really want to go through anymore if we if we can make an argument. Yeah. Um, as uh, you know, as it, sort of a, as our wrap up statement, we, we have finding that uh, underestimating the town's revenues isn't good for the town or for long term budgeting. It makes our long term forecasting look grimmer than necessary. It doesn't give town meeting voters confidence that our sky, of fall, sky is falling proclamations are true, and it won't help us when the sky actually is falling, and we must find new revenues through mm -hmm. taxes. So the rule forward on that one is that if, if we were to go ahead and use more, take a little bit more liberty with revenues than maybe we have in the past, then in all likelihood that will then not um, fund as much free cash in the following year when you take that for initial action, right? It's going to d diminish your free cash going to going. Fund. Yes. Right. Yes. So, but you can fund more of the budget in the spring instead of waiting until fall. fall. Right. right. Yeah. So no, so I'm just saying that, but that would be that, that everybody not, needs it's not to a sacrifice. It's actually doing good budgeting, in my right. opinion. Or so what so we've been doing for the last five years, basically, well, is waiting until fall. Right. Yes. Right. So this way, we're thinking ahead of, ahead of the fall game, and then when we say we don't have enough money. And then we had this huge pile of free cash at the end of the year. That doesn't I mean, obviously, we did something kind of off. So if we balance everything and, and have a, a better number for revenue up front, then we have a more realistic number in the end. And we can tell people that, you know, so yeah, we have, have $300,000 in free cash this year. And that's because we estimated our revenue correctly this year. And we funded everything in the budget when we started the budget. And this three hundred thousand dollars. Well, this is well. We had a dam settlement for this much. We had rollbacks from departments that was this much, and and this. And then we had a little revenue, a little extra more revenue of this much. And then it shows a little more better of a picture. And that's what we were thinking. Yeah, I, I can. I I agree. But I'm just saying when we actually all look at each other and say, yeah, we think this is the budget. You know, we want to bring to town meeting. We need to have contemplated <laughs> 2016 and looked at it and said, okay, we're not just putting ourselves several hundred thousand dollars further into the hole for next year and just kind of, well, we'll worry about that next year because that's the pattern we're trying to get out of. Yes, and I think this yeah. will actually get us out of that pattern more mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. because if we don't estimate our revenues, if we're underestimating our revenues and we're projecting five years out with underestimated revenues, we're just having projected five year out underestimated revenues more. It just makes the actual picture house. worse than it could truly be. So mm -hmm. that's Yeah, I get I get it conceptually. Right. And I know this is these are excellent concepts. Up, I mean up front to bring us right. to where we then have to, like you say, ink and figure out yeah. what department gets what or whose yeah. requests we honor and all that. And consistent with where the select board now is wanting to go with putting off capital in the fall, it would be nice not to redo the budget in the fall. It would be nice really to say, we did the budget yep. in the spring. We're done. Maybe we just have a little wrap up with uh, getting the technicality of the funding lined up and approved by the state, but we're not going to revisit budgets and say, okay, now we can increase them uh, because we did actually get in some more money. And the other, the other thing is it gives us control over that free cash. Free cash isn't just a figure that we can use for whatever purposes, and, and we don't know what it is, that if we start thinking of free cash in at least those two categories, and we say we've got, we've got a portion of free cash that is coming from revenues. So it's not irresponsible to use that free cash on the budget. Yep. But we have a good chunk of that free cash, which is one time, and um, we think it would be irresponsible to, to use that on the budget. Plus, 
we have capital needs. So it's the, and that's mm -hmm. what we want to direct towards our capital needs. Yeah. Um, which state aid know, figure? Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> which state aid um, figure are we using? Is it the? As of January. As of January, so. So what's Are happening? we better? So um, we're, we're a little behind if we're going to use the governor's uh, state aid figure. Um, but I don't think we should be using that figure. The uh, House Ways and Means is going to be issue their budget. I thought it was going to be today, but it's mm -hmm. going to be on the 15th. Okay. And education is one of the things that they're going to try to boost. Uh, so I think we, we're hoping for a 5% increase in the education aid, and we got a 2.5% increase. Mm -hmm. So so uh, the Chapter 70 is going Chapter 70 should go up. But weren't uh, they also um, yeah. putzing around at the charter? Yes. Did so they really put it off to the 15th? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Make it tight. Well, I was really hoping to be done next week with the budget. <laughs> I think we're like that close. We're that close. Uh, I think we, you just have to come up with, you have to come up with your bottom line and yeah. say, this is it. This is what, we're, mm -hmm. this is what our budget is going to be. And we just have to move forward. So then, so, oops, go ahead. The, the, the cherry sheet is going to change at least three more times. Right. Uh, and yeah. there will be the various horse tradings that happened last year. And the year before, there were last minute changes at, uh, in, during the compromise session that nobody saw coming and it ended up costing us more money. I think we've been in the situation at least twice where we've had to use free cash that we hadn't thought that we would need to use at the fall town meeting in order to address that issue. So uh, I think we can make ourselves a little crazy ch trying to chase the cherry sheets here. Uh, so I agree with Linda we choose the bottom line that we, this is our, this is our base and we can make a correction later on, but make your decisions based upon what you know now. And then the school figure that we're using, is it the one, is it the one that the, the schools just came in with? This or, again. This sheet, the expense sheet, so that we don't end up tripping over each other and whose turn it is to, to talk about what and and which department we addressed. We were just a subcommittee. We were not addressing department for requests or anything. Our starting point was what the town administrator's recommendation from January. Right. I'm just so, trying to understand if that right. figure. So that figure in the school at that time was six million four ninety five thousand. And do you remember what the number was on your PowerPoint? Was it close to that? Yes. Uh, no, I don't have it. I don't know exactly, but it was close to that. I might have it right here. Okay. Give me a moment and I'll have it. Yeah, I just wanted to, I mean, if it was like a big swing or something, but if it's close, then. Six million. Yeah, six million four ninety five on here. If everybody's in agreement with it, we can play our talk some Yeah, more then about. we can just drill into what the, we the next some, steps are. Yeah. We have some more information on that too. Oh, okay, cool. So, but if we, if everybody's in agreement, I can see Howard smiling over here. Um, you know, having just seen this for the, you know, <laughs> done by email earlier. Today, yes, yes. Um, I'd like to reserve some comment, but I do have a couple questions. So we're assuming that OPEP capital stabilization will be funded in the fall by sure. free cash. Correct. And we are deferring some operational expenses. No. Name? No. No. Only COLAs. Co Only COLAs. Yeah. operational. Yes. Right. So we're deferring that yes. to the fall. Yes. yes. Okay. But we don't Sources have sources for the extra funds. Um, 
Which extra for, 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 for the spring or for fall? For the spring that you're saying. For the spring sources are um, underestimated revenues to date. Yeah, from what? From fiscal 14. If we have, if, prior, if we yeah. need to look at the certified free cash that's remaining in there and see if there's a portion of it allocable, if, and then how much is allocable, allocatable to revenues. And also, we know from fiscal 15 do, that um, that that was I I figured it was over 200,000. Now you had you thought it was closer to one, and at some point I had. I know it's all, we had, we know that the meals tax alone, the meals tax and, and um, motor vehicle excise tax, and then the overlay money that came in, $90,000, those are 150 and 90, just to start. Plus the prior year, real estate and well, that's, personal tax. Um, that, that's included. what I meant by the 90, yes. the 90 something is that, P, that prior year, yes. So yeah, we're looking at taking, increasing our revenues because we think we're underestimating our revenues as the one source. And the next source is to take part of what we call free cash, which is from revenue, not from reoccur not from one time sources, and use that. It's not part of that. And we have to decide those are the two things we see as the two next decisions to make if we agree. And what are we looking at to have for free cash? We have two nine No, no, I, I don't care what we have oh, and already certified. What are we there are a couple things that I'd like to see. I'd like to see that the projection for the end of this year. We should know what our projected free cash is for FY15. Mm -hmm. I mean, three quarters of the way into the season, we should have a pretty good idea where we're, where we're going with that. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to see those projections. And then we still haven't addressed maintenance issues. I mean, every year I get cornered. We're not spending anything on maintenance. We're not spending anything on maintenance. Nothing on maintenance. Nothing on maintenance. Well, here we go again. This is going to be another year, and nothing in that budget has any substantial increase for maintenance of building. But nothing's been allocated to the actual departmental line items at this point. This is just the bottom line. Nothing's even being Thought. asked for in those projections. Yeah, I, we agree. There's there's probably two big things we're not looking at, and that maintenance is one, and then how to deal with the police is the second. Because. Mm -hmm. Well, what do you mean by maintenance? We've got custodial, no, I mean, we've got maintenance. No, to actually you building repairs. maintenance to Repair keep the buildings the up and running properly. Repairs that don't arise to capital? Is that yes. Right. Yes. Right. Okay. Right. So that would be budget 490, which we increased by 2% as per the select board's instruction. That's all we right. did. That's all we did. But, but, we, but I also said at the time, this could number could be a lot higher just right. Staying within the parameters that were set. So the decision is is whether we want to start doing that now or work our way through our building and come up with what our building committee. Uh, no, our building inventory is going to be at the end when we're done with our process. I mean, we're talking about getting rid of one building. What are we doing with the next buildings? So will we get rid of another building? Will we gain another building? And then that's the way I see we have to work through that process and actually get a number. Um, and that's kind of, unfortunately, that's where I'm seeing maintenance for the building is going. It is moving it down. It, it is putting it off another, another town meeting before you actually have a good number. And then uh, whatever's we got for Warren articles uh, concerns me. And then finally, how does this impact? FY 17, 18, and 19. Mm -hmm. And so it sounds like you really just described the next phase, right? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, we're actually all in agreement. Wow. That never happens. Wait a minute. Subject yeah. to check. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we are in agreement. So should we start with finishing up 16 budget and then seeing how that's going to affect the rest and What do you mean by that? Well, no, I mean, well yeah. we're, we're yeah. still we still have some need to come up with a couple, some more money or decide to start taking stuff out of budgets. Mm -hmm. So the first thing would be to talk about the two sources of revenue we've identified and see how how far we want to go with those two sources of revenue. Is the way I look at it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, where's our projection of free cash for FY15? 
So the, uh, the Gail and I met uh, about a month ago and started putting together numbers for free cash projection. Uh, I think we can say that at this point, subject to change, yeah. uh, we're looking at about 600000 for free cash. So if you're looking for $200,000 out of that for additional revenues to balance the budget, that makes us 400000 And if we're looking at those two numbers that we had for, uh, what you have? You had 244,888 and 300,000, and then plus call increases. So that's at least 544,888 plus call. Can I ask a, a clarifying question on, on your point, Howard? Yeah. The 600,000 you're talking about, that's in addition to the already certified free cash? So assuming that we spend some of that free cash down. But it's so, actually leaving a balance. So you're yeah. saying this. The new certified figure would be a, a, a total of 600. Right. So not it's not 600 plus, not 600 plus what we have. Including the 290? No, we, we figured that, that we, you know, we, were, we were shooting in the dark for a little bit. So we were looking at $100,000 as a base of free cash on which to build based upon the uh, prior year's money that's come in, not taking into account the 292. We sort of left that out of our projection. And then the bill forward based upon estimated receipts coming back in excess of the, of the recap sheet, departmental turnovers, additional state aid payments for such as charter and school choice. Uh, and um, those figures all came together to about $600,000. Well, it's 600 plus the 290 minus whatever portion of the Whatever's used at annual town meeting. Right. That's right. so so the like three that. components. Which is actually and reverse. 600 is from one time. What's actually being used at no. town meeting is small. Do you have uh, so My point is that if you've already used the amount of money that you think you're saving by increasing the revenues and we haven't factored that in yet, and the projection is six hundred thousand dollars, and you've got five hundred forty thousand already projected in two line items, plus a cola that you're pushing off to the fall. Where now are we getting the two hundred or three hundred thousand to put into this budget? Good point. That's. <laughs> but but I don't. I think how what what our what we felt our task was was to try to get a good sense of, a realistic sense of revenues and a sense of expenses. We're not saying this is done, and well, we're not saying the yeah. budget is done. We're not saying we're gonna find the 212,000. We're just saying, we think this is where we are right now. Right. Now we have, what, what day is today? April 1st. April 1st. <laughs> we have a month to figure it out. I'm not trying to be critical, I'm just trying to yeah. understand yeah. so well, that we're not right. double counting or right. nope. right. omitting something. Right. So. Right. You got it, I mean, you're pretty right on. Yeah. So could we then agree on the in additional information that we need and then go into your discussion of the expenses? We could, although I would propose we talk about revenue first and that might clear mm -hmm. up some of the information we need for yep. revenue. Yep. And then mm -hmm. we would have the rest of the part now leaves a little piece left over. Okay. Um, so. Looking back over the revenue, I, I stole these today, so that's why no one has them. I stole them from the office downstairs. So, <laughs> from Mr. Nixon. I see. Do we have them? No, you don't. I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't make copies. So, last year, our revenue was, our, our revenue, let me read it, I'll pass it to you. They're like they are on, on, the, on, the, on the revenue page right after the number. Are they? I have fiscal 14 budgeted fiscal 13 actual. We have the 14 budgeted fiscal 14 actual. Well, actually, I have the breakdown. I'll look better. And I have the presentation from uh, the municipal conference in my pocketbook. I just never took it out. So, so we actually, last year, we were 300000 over what we budgeted for revenue. The year before that, we were 100000 And the year before that, we were back around 300000 so we are limited by 5% of our local, if we look only at our local local receipts. local receipts, we're limited to increasing that only by 5%. And using the $2 million figure, that 5% is 100,000. 
So that's the lowest number we've brought in over the last three years. So is, David, is it the five percent off of the recap sheet? Right now, we're um, we're we're estimating for FY this fiscal year, fifteen, estimating ninety-five percent of our local local receipts are what we actually collected. So the Department of Revenue is going to look at us very hard if we exceed that Off additional five percent. So if we if we say six percent, they're gonna they're gonna look at that and they may challenge it, which we want to avoid. But the numbers that we set forth on the recap sheet were lower by a hundred and twenty four thousand dollars than they were last year. Is that a net of skating that you're talking about? No, this is the local receipts off the recap sheet. Okay. So we, we For FY14 so or 15? 14. 14 and 15. Okay. So I have actual receipts um, listed on page 3 of the recap sheet. For 14, call it, um, for easy figuring, $2.3 million. That's actual. So for estimated receipts for this for the school year, we have called for easy figuring $2.2 million. Right. That's the $100,000 difference. Yeah. Uh, so you can increase, increase this by another 100000 based upon our estimates right now. But well, why are we reporting to the state $100,000 less than we had the year before? Can I read the, um, uh, this is uh, right out of the yeah. conference, um, estimating local receipts. Uh, it says projections can be based on the previous year's actual receipts. Larger increases above simple inflation are allowed if the reason can be documented. Some of these local revenues cover the direct cost, so be careful of that if it's user fees, whatever. Um, DLS advises that the amounts contained on page three be estimated conservatively. Conservative estimates may result in increased future certified free cash. So that's the general process right there. So one of the challenges that we had this uh, particular year is that uh, we had a reval year and we knew that the tax setting was going to be delayed and we had a real crunch getting the, the, uh, the third and fourth quarter real estate bills out the door in time. Uh, we had a town meeting which was a little later in the season than normal by about a week. So we didn't want to, we didn't want to do anything that was going to create a problem with Department of Revenue delaying the setting of the tax rate because then that would have that would have caused a real problem for the taxpayers out there. Um, Ninety-five percent is basically what Department of Revenue would like to see because they want to see estimated receipts. Your estimate to be lower than your actual in ca case there's a year-to-year -year fluctuation. That's something something burns down or, or that there's the, the revenue source that you're hoping for suddenly goes if, on. If that's the case, then after about five years, you're under underestimating revenues by a tremendous amount of money. I mean, you keep yes. those, uh, No, you're always, you're 30, always estimating 5% less than what you actually took in. Yes. So if your revenues go up. Oh, not over the year before's estimate. Right. 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 It is the year before's estimate. And we're taking 95% of the year before? Well, when, when, when you're doing it every year, you're not. But when you take, sit down and take a five-year budget and lay out a five-year budget, you then are. Then you are. Yeah. Right, exactly. So the project, your future projections are off. Look bad. Right. They're, they're really looking bad. But if you're doing it year to year in the budget cycle, you're, you're just, like David said, you're just taking 95% of the actuals from the prior year. Yeah. Well, so if you're right. actuals in at that time, though. Are you talking about actuals like going back two years? Which actuals? Do we use for 16? We, we, would, we aren't done with 15. Right. So when we set the uh, uh, recap sheet, which would be in November, Before. we will have the actuals for 15. Mm -hmm. So we'll be setting the estimates for 16 based upon the actuals of 15. Right. Okay. Yeah. But not of all categories of receipts then, because I mean, our, motor, our motel, those receipts went in. Yes. And then afterwards. No, that wouldn't no, they're would in there. Be, it it would be all. Everything's in the recap. It's just that you're half, roughly halfway into the year. That's for 15. 
but in November, November, what year are we in? Right. 2015. In November 2015, um, when we're looking at FY15, FY15 will have concluded in July. And we have actuals. So we'll have those actuals at that time to set the recap sheet. Right. And in that or recap sheet, you're this is, estimating. Yeah, I'm not saying anything inconsistent. I'm right. saying as we're looking now to fiscal 16, Mm -hmm. We don't have. We, have we don't have fifteen. Yeah. No, and to your point, so we have projected revenue. We have projected actuals for this cap this fiscal year. And we know they're not right, or they're not really actuals. We have well, projected. We, have we should have projected actuals to say we thought when we budgeted, pick a number. Two point two million. Two point two. But we're running where we're highly likely going to hit, and I'm making this up, 2.4 million. Mm -hmm. So in all likelihood, when the recap is done in November of 2015, it will reflect the 2.4. And I thought what you were saying is that if we know that we're already heading we there, there, can we pull it in early? Can we use, yeah. but, and I think what I, I will speak for you, what I'm saying is that I think we still want to be careful and only plan on 95% of where we think we're going to wind up, not the whole yeah. kit and caboodle. To put it in perspective, Molly, yep. the recap sheet for FY15 that we're in says that at the end of the year we should have $2.261 million in local receipts. Mm -hmm. The February 28th date for revenues, mm -hmm. the bottom of receipts to date is uh, almost 1.3 million. Last year, we had $2.3 million worth of receipts. Mm -hmm. It's, you're going, you're going backwards, you know, you're, you're never going to get what we're trying to do, you know, because you're going to get 5% increase of a number that you took 5% decrease of. So you're not even going to get back to FY14's number. Uh, I don't think so. so okay. You, you're taking 95% of a large number to give you a number. Then you're taking 105% of that small number trying to get back to the large one. It's yes. not the same. So your, your big drivers of <coughs> local receipts are three accounts. There's the motor vehicle excise, which um, the, the, the big commitment is uh, issued in late, late winter. And so you start seeing that money coming in at the last quarter of the year. So that number, even though it's somewhere around 100,000 right now, it's going to increase a lot in the last quarter, we're going to see a big increase there, it's like a hockey stick. Um, and we know that the commitment for that is $24,000 higher than we had in, in, than last year. So we know that there's going to be additional monies there. Your other big accounts are motel and meals, mm -hmm. uh, and those come in once every quarter. And those look like they're right on target for, for hitting their uh, in fact, on meals alone, I think you're going to be a hundred thousand richer um, because the first quarter came in at nearly double, nearly a sixty thousand dollar increase, and your second quarter came in at an eighteen thousand dollar increase above uh, estimates. So I think you're, you're you know, I, I'm not uncomfortable with where we are with respect to hitting that two point two or even exceeding that 2.2. So everybody at home, the biggest way to help our budget process is eat out at your local uh, restaurants. And when you have visitors come stay with you, make them stay at a hotel, not with you. And buy, and buy a new car. And buy a new car. <laughs> <laughs> and everything, uh, and we'll all be happier. <laughs> I got a message for you, stop spending my money and then I'll buy a new car. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the long and the short of this is, I, although I agree that we're getting more money in, I don't think we're allowed to put that much more into revenue, which is why in years past, 
we've taken the conservative approach and said, okay, we don't have the money here, we'll push it off to the fall and address it then. But we have to, again, identify what's not one-time revenue, what's Correct. actual an increase in revenue. Which, and I think, so taking that into account, I think that we can seriously say that 100,000 is an increase we have, and we can safe to add that in. And if we look at our local local um, revenues, one of the things that makes up our local, local revenues is our pilot. And the pilot is from our cell towers and other... It's from the uh, Hadley Housing Authority, uh, land owned by other towns in, in, uh, in Hadley, and uh, for the Silvio County Wildlife Refuge, they're paying pilot payments okay. for land that's preserved over there. And where's the cell tower one? I mean the... Um, cell tower solar, comes The solar into, ones. The solar comes in, uh, I believe that comes in under select board receipts. Receipts, yeah. Looks like it, because that's where the increase is. Okay. So we're nice to see that separately, actually. So we know we have one more of those. I take, I take that back. Solar comes under new growth, <coughs> by, by mistake. New growth. New growth. Every year. Yeah. New growth and local receipts? Every year. It's built into new growth. Up above here is oh, tax? Yeah. It's a tax, not a... Right. It's personal property tax. Okay. Oh. The pi pilot... Yes. So it gets really technical at the Department of Revenue level, but it is a pilot in lieu of personal property tax. Mm -hmm. So, still saying that. We know we have one more of those coming, which we didn't budget for last year, which is already built. Mm -hmm. And then we have another one on the horizon, which we have a little talk at town meeting about. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I personally, I think a hundred thousand or five percent is a, is a, a good number to add back mm -hmm. in here right now, and it's not. And I understand what Howard is also saying about if we cut a number by five percent and then take five percent of that cut number, you're not making back up to the original number, and you'll always be diverging as you move out to the years. Um, so my my personal take is, I do feel comfortable adding that hundred thousand in, and if we're in agreement then that's the one, one thing we would we could do. And then, so if we add that, that's good. But then the other thing that's not in this number is the step raises mm -hmm. that we as a town have to give. Um, step and that, or, no, now you're talking no, about no, cola. No, 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 the step steps raises. Are in. Steps are in, no cola. Cola's not in, step's not in, is no, in. Neither no, cola nor no. step are in. The step is the $50,000 number that we were, talk, we were talking about. No steps, no cola in the town. Yes. In the in the projected mm. budget here, uh, there are you know the, the step and cola is, is listed separately and not in the baseline budget that Linda presented. Mm. So, so the then baseline. Okay. you add a hundred thousand, you subtract fifty thousand, and what it leaves you with is we have to come up with one hundred seventy-two and change of changes to the budget mm -hmm. to to make our current budget work. Mm -hmm. and, if, and if we're all in agreement with the uh, hundred thousand in revenue, then the school committee and the select board probably need to take our budgets yes. and work on them mm -hmm. and see where we can come out on, on, on this number. Can I just ask a clarifying question? I thought you were saying, Guilford, that you were thinking there was consensus that we were comfortable with adding assuming another 100,000 of FY15 receipts, but we still have not gone back to the FY14 to see if there's anything available. To From the free cash Correct. figure. That's the second step. Okay, I thought you were getting to cutting the budgets. No, no. So I was kind of getting to cutting the budgets. So we were here with that point with the budgets. So, and then the other option is, is to say, okay, what of the free cash we have from last year is um, reoccur is, is reoccurring revenue, and do we want to use any of that, or wait until a later point to decide how to do that? Now, I would do it now. We well, I I think we should have the information in we front don't of us. Have that Right. But yeah. that doesn't mean that we yeah. just stop there because I right. think that begs a bigger discussion about protecting free cash Correct. again. So, so right. but it's good to know. But if we're <laughs> if we're in agreement so far, then we, what we can do is we can get the information back to you about how the free cash was made for 14. 
right. and then the, the school committee and the select, select board can look at our budgets and see where we might do some things and then when we then if we well we're going to talk about the budget next select board meeting so then if we talk about the budget next select board meeting then we can decide if, if that's going to be the final take on this budget or if we're going to take a couple more another meeting to do it so we do we meet on the 7th and we're scheduled to meet on the 15th the 7th or the 8th Eighth, sorry so we can we continue with the list of questions uh, information that we yes. that we want then um, when was the projected fiscal um which one is 15th? We'll be talking right. about the budget on both meetings. Because okay. we are still talking about the Warren articles, so one of the Warren articles is the budget, so we can talk about the budget. So the fifteenth is the free cash. We would like to see that broken down as to um, these two categories. So recurring and non recurring? Mm -hmm. It's okay. Mm -hmm. And adding in the hundred thousand. And we're going to add in a hundred thousand of revenue for but that not okay that's for the this fifth or this is for the but 16. But that's actually captured in the 600. Sorry, yeah. we don't yes. want to spend it twice we're not going to be spending it twice because it's not there now yeah so not there now. shouldn't be there now if you're using January numbers. We're going to add 100,000 to the January numbers. I, if I could, I mean, that sounds about right, but it would be good to have an actual calculated figure that everybody could look at and go, yep, hundreds of. Based on 5% based on of the. Yeah, the January, the anticipated addition to this, and then show the 95, it, show the yeah, whatever it should be. be a little more. I, I think it can actually be a little bit higher. It will be a little more. Okay. And at the same time, can we get the on the projected FY15 free cash? Can we see what that's comprised of, so we know how much is coming out of uh, not one one-time revenue versus recurring revenue? Yes. And I have a, a related question to that. I mean, uh, one of the things that reduces free cash are illegal deficits. Do we have any potential issues this year of overspending what town meeting appropriated, or? Yes, um, so that's one of the articles in the, uh, in the, uh, uh, in the, uh, the warrant for the annual town meeting is uh, we, have, we have several budgets that look like they need to have be supplemented by transfers that uh, exceed what we can do at the end of the year, either from the reserve fund transfer or from the line-to-line -line transfer, uh, mm -hmm. which has certain caps on it. So an example would be the uh, snow and ice budget where materials we're in the red on, but on overtime we have a surplus. Yeah. That surplus is larger than what we can transfer during the line-to-line -line transfer period from May mm -hmm. to June. So we would be using that, that article uh, in order to affect that transfer. Uh, that would not address all of the, uh, the shortfall in that particular budget. So we would have to either do a reserve fund transfer, free cash supplement, or um, a line-to-line -line transfer. So I, w I was hoping to have all of that information for you today and it just didn't come together. Well, that's okay, but that has to be wrapped into Howard's yeah. question yeah. Exactly. because so, we know that we're... The flip side there. is who's not spending the whole budget too. That needs to come in as right. well. Yeah. Right, but who's over? Illegal who's deficits under? are a direct dollar for dollar reduction of your free cash amount. Unless you. Unless you fix it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But we, we have, have to figure if you're fixing it for fiscal 15, how good is the estimate for 16? Right. Yes. That's so if we've got yeah. something that's not in control for this year, what are you going to put into place to get into control for next year? Right. We're not going to have another one too on this. There's other things. Oh, sure. actually, actually, it should oh, thank be. Thank you. That's good to know. <laughs> <laughs> We're all estimating that next year is going to be a nice winter, a nice easy winter, and the winter after that is going to be another bad one, and it's going to be every other. That's. Okay. Last oh, year. Was next year. I thought it was a seven year. Uh, that's a, you're talking to the farmers or the other DPW yeah. guys? Um, yeah. we're, we're the DPW guys talking to ourselves. Okay. Because <laughs> last year we, we actually fin we finished with the money left over in our budget. The year before we blew our budgets again. So. 
Okay, so for the revenues, so the free cash. Free cash estimates, estimates. Is the breakdown of recurring, non-recurring. Uh, projection for, I'll update the projection for FY16 free cash. Uh, and from the assessors, I'll get that $100,000 figure uh, and with some more precision uh, and find out if there's any issues that, uh, that they're likely to raise concerning the, the recap. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we want to know everything that's going to impact the um, current certified free cash that's coming up at that annual meeting, too. Yeah. We're going to go over some of those. Okay. No, you said you wouldn't have them for tonight. Well, a couple we do have, but uh, actually, no, we said for this, the next Six. meeting. Right, yeah, right. We said for the next meeting. Yeah. Is there more that we, more information we need? Just how are we going to get through the 17 and 18? I wait in breathless anticipation for that one. Cool. Well, I, I think every time we, we get, we're getting closer and closer to, and, and we now get, have a good start, and it's getting better every time. So then, if we do this, I think we'll be much, because, yeah, it's looking much better, and we have a much better picture handle on what we're going forward. And if we actually can agree if how we want to spend this free cash based on what the categories are, money that make free cash, then, then that helps us out when we look at 17, 18, and 19. I think this hearing this 600,000 for July 1 and knowing that we've got 544 or 888 on those just those two items for the fall has me a little more concerned than I thought we I thought we were in a little better shape Monday morning than I'm hearing now as we far as the projected free cash. Welcome to the budget process yeah. now. Whoops. <laughs> 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 that's a big hit on the on the free cash. So I that's why I'm really really want to make sure we nail what's going to happen to this 290 something. Right. Who's, yeah, what, what's hitting that at the annual town meeting? And Linda, you said you'll, the schools will figure out the COLA, the, what your COLA number is. What your is. COLA number is in the. We're in negotiations now. They have our time. budget that includes a COLA number and the steps. So the school's budget includes assumptions on both actual step. Assumed goal. Okay. okay. To be continued. Right. All right. Tally Hall, Happy Easter. Just a side note, we uh, we changed the way that we're presenting the select board material on the website. Did you all have a chance to take a look at that, and did you find it helpful? Yes. It was kind of neat to have it individual, so you didn't have to read through the whole thing. That was much better. Yeah. Is that, oh, that's a picture. This was, yeah. so I, I it was, it was, it was, it was, it used to, the packet was all, all scanned as one lump sum document, so if you wanted to look at the middle of the document, you had to scan, you know, read all the way through. But it, oh, it wasn't typically on the website <coughs> in advance of the meeting. Um, no, I, th I think you started putting it on in advance of the meeting of, uh, a little while ago, but now we've reorganized how that's done. So we just want to. It's only the second week we've done it, and this time we broke it down. The last time it was just one big packet. Right, just the big PDF. So this week was the first time that we broke it down. It was just a couple of days before. That's so great. We're just looking for feedback to find out how useful that is. It was. It was good. The only comment I make is it was. You didn't know that was the actual meeting that was coming up. There was nothing on it that said. It just said. Do you have the date on the title? No, it said okay. 2015 meeting, and then you just opened up to everything on today's meeting. Because they're going to, when the next meetings come, I, I thought I put it 0401 on the title of each document, but the folder will just say 2015 material. So we'll work okay. on that. But I'll, we'll, yeah, yeah, because the other ones are going to go in the same we'll folder. We'll have a stamp. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But yes, thank you. Okay. It's very, very helpful. All right. So uh, not everybody sat through an hour of meeting and uh, they saw the finance committee, school committee, and the select board kind of agree on something. <laughs> April Fool. <I> missed <laughs> <laughs> now what we really think. Now, well, yeah. You're blushing on that one. Uh, yeah. I'm just kind of warm. That was good, Gilbert. Okay. Okay, I guess we're all set until... Um, Actually, so we're not planning on meeting as a tribe board unless we want to do the third meeting. 
we will have a, a budget discussion on the second meeting, which is the 8th. And then I guess we can decide then at that meeting if we need to have a tri-board meeting before the 15th meeting, if that's okay. You're saying April 8th will just be regular select board start Regular select at board start at 7. Okay. We will have budget stuff on it. We will have warrant articles on it. We're inviting several of the people who have warrant articles, several department heads and the citizen petitions that come talk to us on the 8th so they can have time to present their petitions and talk to it and people can answer, ask questions and answer questions. If that's going to be the uh, progression, could we get the projected numbers on the revenue and the expenses uh, for FY 17, 18, 19, to see how this affects, affects it. it? Yes, we can do that. Okay. So update the five-year, four-year plan. Mm -hmm. Yes, now a four-year plan. Yeah, and I think it's worth going out one more until we've got some of these early year right. yeah, policies set. So. It just scares us. All right, I think we're doing good. Every year. <laughs> okay, so it's now 7.01, and if Thank everyone's you. in agreement, we'll move on to the select board meeting.